Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome back to another discussion dynamics. Um, today, uh, we will continue our work energy methods. As you can see, uh, we will actually learn a new version of our equation we learned last time. So we will do a brief lecture review, uh, and then, then we'll just do two, two example problems. Okay, example number one and example number two. Okay, without further ado, let's uh, dive straight into it. So what happened last time? Aha, last time we derived this, this expression, right? Last time we derived this expression. Uh, and we started with, with this expression. Do you remember? And uh, by the way, uh, last time, do you, do you remember that I was like not sure if this is a net force or not? I spent some time at home uh, and uh, uh, some time thinking, and it is a net force. So if you want to go back to your, to your notes from uh, last week, uh, you can put that this is net force actually acting on the body. Net force. Okay. Something is wrong again with my tablet. Uh, I just need a minute, guys, okay, to fix it. Okay, let's see if it works right now. I'm not sure if I fixed it. Okay, uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, okay, so last time uh, we started with this, with this expression and we ended up with this expression. And by the way, this work was work of all the forces acting on our, our particle. Yes, we didn't say anything specific of the, these forces. Yeah, they were all the forces acting on our particle. Um, today, we will start exactly the same expression. However, we will divide our forces into two groups, uh, conservative and non-conservative forces. So, if you do uh, analogical uh, transformations as we did last time, you will end up with, with such such expression. Uh, T1 uh, plus V1, uh, no, sorry, T1 plus U1 to non-conserv, U1 to uh, of conservative forces plus U12 of non-conservative forces is equal to T2. Okay? Mm. And if you actually uh, integrate all of these conservative forces, you will end up with such expression. It will be uh, the 1 minus V2. This is difference in potential energies. Okay. And with this day, we cannot do much. With this day, we have to integrate exactly how we did last time. So that would be uh, U12 of non conservative forces. Okay? So we actually ended up with a new version of our expression from last week. The other ver so that would be the other version. The other version of our work energy expression. So 
So it will be T1 plus V1 plus U12 non-conservative is equal to T2 plus V2. Okay, and we will use this expression uh, two times today. And also use it all the time, okay? So the previous version of expression is cool, but I usually go for this one, okay? Uh, this, one is this one is equivalent, this one is equivalent to this one, okay? But I usually go for, go for this one. It's, it's faster, it's, it's less work, okay? So also on the exam, okay? And also after the dynamics, if you run into work energy problem, also go for this one, okay? Um, any questions so far? Yeah, today I will also show you the recipe. Today I will show you the solution steps you should follow also on the exam and also every time you run into, also after the exam, after, yeah, also in, in, in uh, outside of this course when you run into this problem. Okay, so since there are no questions, yes, uh, I just would like to uh, maybe you guys to give me some examples of conservative forces, okay? So let's, let's create our table. Examples of conservative forces. Okay, so we'll have force. And we also will have potential energy associated with that force. So it will be potential, potential energy. Okay, so any force comes to, to your mind that is conservative force? Gravity, okay. Gravity, so force associated with that is F equals to mg. And our potential energy will be uh, mg times some elevation. Yes, okay. Any other example? Go for it. Linear spring, exactly. Linear spring. So our force in such spring will be uh, Kx. And potential will be one half Kx squared, yes? Okay, but we also run into cubic springs, yeah? Not only linear, but cubic as well. Cubic springs. Or oh, even probably last discussion, yeah? So force associated with such spring is uh, Kx cube, and potential will be one four, so quarter times Kx to the power of four. Okay, and I think that's all this semester. Uh, I think you will not run into any other, but if you do, if you if we do, uh, you will know what to do with them. <laughs> exactly. Okay, so these are conservative forces. How about non-conservative? Any examples? Uh, Evan? Friction. And specifically kinetic friction, yes? Because static does not do any work, yeah? Because there is no motion there. Uh, friction kinetic. So our uh, force will be mu n, yep. Yeah? And that's it. Oh no, last discussion, I also made a mistake because I wrote that potential energy associated with that, I mean, uh, U12, U12 of that, don't write it, please, don't write it, okay? Uh, or just write that this is, pro this is not totally true. So I wrote that U12 of this force is this, mu k n times distance, of course, with minus here, yes? That's only true when mu k n is, when n is constant, yes? But n can change 
uh, in time it can change uh, wh while the body is moving. So I must apologize to other guys next week, okay? Or unless you're watching this video, just correct your notes. Okay, so yeah, in this case, we, got, we guys must integrate like exactly how we did on Wednesday, okay? Any other example of uh, non-conservative force? How about applied force? Yeah, I can I can pump the energy in the system yeah, by, I don't know, pushing it or pulling it, yeah? Applied force. Applied force. So it will be some F, I don't know, it can change in time, it can change uh, along the distance and so on. And the third one you can run into this semester, but it's not very common, uh, aerodynamic drag. Aerodynamic drag. And usually we, we model it uh, by some constant times velocity squared. Yeah, usually. Usually. Yeah, mm, and I don't know, maybe some other examples, but these three are the most common this semester. Any questions? What happened so far? Just as a digression, uh, I recently uh, was talking with one professor uh, from Texas, and uh, he spent last 10 years on investigating friction, and uh, he's quite clear, and not only him, many other people, that uh, this is not a true expression for friction. Yeah, It is mo most common used in industry and also in such, uh, in probably most of the courses you're going to take. I'm not sure if, oh no, I think we offer tribology. Yes, tribology is science, uh, about, uh, is science that is interested in friction. I think Professor Melly Eriton offers that course. Yeah. But it might be grad school or something. I don't know. So anyway, this is not uh, friction. Is much more complicated uh, than uh, mu mu k, of course, mu k times n. Yeah, it depends on m m many other uh, var variables. Okay, just as a digression. Yeah. Okay. Questions or example number one. Example number one. As usually, please familiarize yourself with the problem statement before we start our solution. All right, so do we have, what do we have in here? So, first of all, we have uh, our uh, particle that has mass m and our linear spring that has spring constant k, yep. And uh, that, that particle is uh, attached to the spring at the very beginning. We uh, pre-compress our uh, spring by one sixth of the feet, so that would be delta zero. And we release that particle from rest, yeah? And they ask us what will be the velocity of the, of the particle when our spring uh, gain, uh, gains back its rest length, yeah? Okay, so we know how much our particle weights, we know what is the initial pre-compression, we know that system starts from rest, and we know uh, what is our goal. We, we know what final velocity we should get, yeah? And they ask us what spring we should buy, yeah? What, what spring we should choose from the catalog, yeah? Okay, solution. Any solution, so we will just go for this expression. And this is basically the recipe you should go for, let's say, on the exam, okay? So we go for T1 plus V1 plus U12, non-conservative is equal to T2 plus V2. Okay, and you already have one point. And now second step is this. Uh, let's find these five guys, yeah? 
So let's find T1, V1, uh, T2, V2, U1, 2, non-conservative. Let's find these five guys to grab more points. Okay, uh, system starts from rest, yeah? So T1 will be zero. Sys starts from rest. Okay, and at the end we have some velocity, yes? So kinetic energy at the end will be one half mv squared. I don't, do you want to call it v final? Maybe let's call it vf, not v, okay? v final, vf, vf, v final. Okay, how about potential energies? Anybody want to... Anybody want to help me here? We have a spring in the system, yeah? So our uh, V1 will come from spring, yeah? Spring and V2 also will come from spring. So I think that at the, at the beginning we have a pre-compression, yeah? So our potential energy, if you look at the, at the other board, will be one half K delta zero squared. Yeah, this is potential energy of the spring. And at the end, our spring is at rest length. So this is zero. Great. So we have 80% of the problem done. Yeah. We just need to find, we just need to find the last final thing. U12 of non-conservative forces. Question to you. Are there any non-conservative forces acting on our particle? I see two people shaking their heads. They're right. Uh, this is zero. Why? Because there are no non-conservative forces acting on our system. Acting on our system. Okay, so no 100, no 80%, but 100% done. Yeah. It was fast, don't you think? Yeah. Okay, so what will be the next step of our solution? Let's plug these five guys back into our original equation. These guys go back here. Okay, so what will we have in here? We'll have uh, zero uh, plus one half k delta zero squared plus zero, and this is equal to one half nvf squared plus zero. Okay, and this is one equation, one unknown, yeah? One equation one unknown. Okay, so just let's solve for k. But maybe before solving for k, I will just tell you something, guys, uh, something uh, characteristic to this method. So uh, in work energy approach, we will usually end up with one equation, one very long equation, not this one, of course, but in the future you will see very long equations, okay? With one unknown, maybe more unknowns, okay? My point, my point is that we will end up with one equation that is very long. In contrast to what we've seen in kinetics, yeah? Because in kinetics, we ended up with like four equations, yeah? With like five unknowns or something, yeah? And these equations, these four equations were like very short, yeah? So we got multiple equations before that were very short, but in here, we will have one equation only that is very long, okay? So that's, in here we just put everything into one basket, yeah? That's why, yeah, so just an observation, yeah? Okay, let's find that K. So that half can be, can cancel out, and K is equal to M times V final, uh, D zero squared. Okay, let's plug in values. So our K is equal to, 0 0.178125 divided by 30, 32.2. 32 
times 15 squared, 1 divided by 6 squared calculators, and obtain triumphantly that our k is approximately 44,808 pounds per feet. Okay, this is the answer. Go to catalog and choose that spring. Uh, answer. If you want to build a pin, pinball table. Okay, questions? Uh, Jason. No, Jaden. Yes, uh, yes. Is there any, so like we, when we said you want to not conservative, my mind thinks friction right away. Is there any other non conservative forces that like we should know and or are responsible for in this class? Like friction or drag, I guess? <laughs> <laughs> yes, like these ones. <laughs> yes, these ones. Yeah. yeah, but none of them was in the was in the problem. Right. Yeah, none of them was in the problem uh, because they didn't tell us that there is a friction. Okay. Yeah, they just yeah they didn't tell us that there is a friction. They told us to ignore everything else. Okay. Yeah, and that's also one of the things you should learn this semester. You should learn how to model things, yeah, in a correct way, right. in a mathematical way. So you should know, in other words, you should know what to include in your model and what not to include in your model, yeah. Any other question? Easy, that was easy, yeah? So let's do a little bit more, more interesting problem. Uh, problem number two, uh, and please, as usually, Familiar, familiarize yourself with the problem statement before we start our solution. Okay. So what, what do we have in here? We have our pendulum uh, with mass m attached to its end. Uh, we know that our pendulum is released from rest, and we know that a gravity acts downwards. Uh, and this is the configuration, this is, this is the position we are going to release our pendulum from. Now, at, at the other uh, configuration, at some arbitrary configuration b, yeah, so here, uh, our pendulum will, of course, lower its elevation and, and it will gain velocity. And our trajectory is a circle, as you can see. Uh, okay, so what do we know? Aha, we know G. And we know that our rope uh, breaks at when the, when the tension in the rope is 2 mg. Yeah? So this is how strong our rope is. Yeah? So if our ten tension is larger than 2 mg, uh, we will have two ropes, yeah, but shorter. Um, and they also told us to ignore the air, air resistance. You see, uh, please look at the last sentence. Yeah, this is the yeah. They told us to ignore the air resistance. Yes, yeah. So we are going to get, uh, forget about that this exists. Yeah, and we will model our system like that. And they ask us to actually find uh, angle theta, this angle at which our, our rope will break. That's interesting, yeah. So let's maybe call it a theta star, okay? Because this is like not some arbitrary theta, it's, it's gonna be theta star. And variables M and L, we will introduce. We don't know, we don't know what they are, but we'll just introduce them in order to solve our, our problem, okay? We'll introduce them and they will, then they will cancel out. Just to be even more clear, we will introduce them because we, uh, because they will allow us to put to put together our equation, okay? To write, uh, yeah. But then you will see, guys, that they will cancel out. Anyway, let's start the solution. Unless there is a question to the problem statement. Solution. Okay. So this problem is interesting because it combines kinetics and work energy method. Okay. So part one of that solution. Part one is kinetics. 
Uh, yeah, I told you on Wednesday that even though we are done with kinematics and kinetics, these guys will keep coming all the time, yes? Not all the time, mo most of the time, okay? So what was the recipe in kinetics? First step, FBD. FBD, add some arbitrary pos position, okay? Add some arbitrary position. And of course, KD. Okay, so I could copy that drawing actually, but I'm gonna I'm going to draw it. So this is our trajectory. Uh, this is where our rope is, and it should be arbitrary. So let's say here. Let's say here. Okay. So yeah, actually, just make sure that these lines are uh, dashed, okay? Because actually, on our FBD, we should only have that dot, okay? This is particle M. Um, okay, and I will copy paste it exactly the, the same drawing to our KD. Okay, so what forces act on our particle? I'm gonna go for the easy force, yeah, because you guys are much smarter than me. So I'm gonna just start with easy one. This is mg. And what's what's the other force acting on our system? Tension. Yeah, somebody whispered it there. I heard you. <laughs> T. There are no other forces acting on our system. Okay, and this is. Uh, cur curvy linear, linear motion, yes? This is not rectilinear. So we will go for either polar, polar or NT. And I'm gonna go for NT, okay? I'm gonna go for NT coordinate system. So let me introduce UT in here. That has to be tangent to the trajectory. And this is UN. Okay, and let's introduce our inertia forces here. So that would be AT, and this is AN. Okay, guys, I apologize for a little bit sloppy drawings here. You probably recorded that I can draw better than that. The end of my pen is very slippery today, okay? I must replace it. Okay, I just don't know how to do it yet. I will do it today in the in the evening. But you, you can figure out with the directions, yeah. The, by the way, this is a right angle. Okay, this is right. This is 90 degrees in here. Okay. Um, all right. So we're done with our FBD and KD. Uh, what's the second step? EOM. Yeah. Second step is EOM. So we will just write these two expressions. Uh, sum of forces into in the t direction, where this is positive direction, and sum of forces in the n direction, when this is where this is positive direction. Okay. Okay. So sum of forces in the t direction. Oh no, we have to do some projections here. Yes. Okay. So and more that that involves more drawing, unfortunately. Okay. So I must concentrate. Oh no. So these two directions, yes. Oh no. Okay, so I must project this vector here and here. Here and here. And I believe that this angle is theta, yeah? This is theta. So that means that theta will be here. Yeah, because this will be theta. So that means that this one will be 90 minus theta. And theta will be here. Great. And that implies that this is mg cosine theta. mg cosine theta. And this guy has no other choice. mg sine theta. Cool, we are ready to write down our equations. 
So in the T direction. We have just mg cosine theta, and this is equal to m80. Uh oh, I forgot about masses in here, yes? So it's not 80, but it's m times 80, yes? Sorry, guys, let me correct myself. Put m in here, please. Okay, and in the n direction, we have t acting this way and mg with a negative sign. All right. So far, so good, yeah, right? So what was next step in here? Aha, we were replacing AT with this expression and AN with this expression, V squared over rho. Yeah, and I think I will need some help right now because can you guys tell me what is rho in this problem? L, yeah, and it's constant also, yeah? Rho, it's L, and it's constant. All right, so let's plug in these guys here, and we'll end up with mg cosine theta, that is equal to m dv dt, and also t minus mg sine theta, that is equal to uh, m v squared over rho, uh, over L, over L. Okay, so I saw that problem yesterday at home, and it turned out that this equation does not contribute anything to, into our solution, yeah? We just put it to, together for sport, okay? So this, this expression does not contribute anything. This expression, this equation does not contribute anything into our solution, okay? Into our solution. Okay, but this guy is important. So let's see how many unknowns do we have and so on. We for sure have one equation, yeah? We for sure have one equation. And how many unknowns? One equation. And we don't know velocity. We don't know. Actually, you know what? Maybe before doing that, let's plug in our re requirement, OK? Our requirement was t equals to 2mg, OK? Requirement, find theta star such that t is equal to 2mg, yeah? Yeah, because this is the tension and at, at which our, bro our rope will break. So we can have here 2mg minus mg sine theta star is equal to m v squared rho over l. You see, guys, I told you that m, m will cancel out. Yeah, we had to introduce it just to put together this equation. So we have 2g minus g sine theta star is equal to v squared over l. Okay, so now we have one equation. And this is not known, I believe. Velocity is not known. 
and also we don't we don't know L. Okay, but L is I will I will cancel out. I, so we have kind of like two unknowns. I, I we have kind of three unknowns, but in fact two. Okay, so let's say three unknowns. Okay. Anyway, more unknowns than equations. <laughs> that, that's for sure. So we need more equations. So now let's go for mm, to find more equations. We, we will go for work energy method. Okay. So this is our part two. Part two of our, our problem. It will be work energy method. Okay. But this is also a good time for questions. Uh, is everything I did so far clear, or are there any questions? Uh, uh, AJ? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I just solved that problem. Uh, it, it does not contribute because it's uh, decoupled from the from the other two equations. Yeah. Uh, Maybe you're you're right. Yeah, maybe your reason is 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 fine. Uh, just that question has, that equation has its own life. Yeah, because sometimes you know you end up with a system of equations, and some of the equations can be solved right away. Yeah, so th that equation has nothing to do with the rest of the system. Yeah, that that's why it doesn't contribute. And the better answer is that I solved it yesterday, and I realized that we can get rid of it. <laughs> yeah. Any other question? That was a good question, yeah. Yeah, that's why you are having these discussions, yeah, so that I can show you what you can run into, yeah, during the exam, for example, yeah. So I ran into something like that yesterday, and I decided to share it with you guys. Okay, uh, work energy method. Let's do our routine, okay? So you guys know what, what I'm gonna write, yeah? T1 plus V1 plus U12 non-conservative is equal to T2 plus V2. Okay, and second step, T1, V1, T2, V2, U12, non-conservative. Okay, let's fill it out. Let's find these five guys. System starts from rest. Bang, 20% of the problem done right away. Yeah, system starts from rest. Okay, and at the end, at some arbitrary position, we'll have some arbitrary velocity, yes? So it will be one half m v squared. By the way, I know that, guys, that you know that, uh, but I'm just gonna write it anyway. So subscript one corresponds to initial configuration, okay? Initial, initial configuration. And subscript two, is that arbitrary configuration? Arbitrary configuration. Yeah. So if I scroll up the board, uh, T1 and V1 are calculated for this configuration, okay? And T2 and V2 are for this one. You knew it, yeah? Sorry, yeah. But just for, for the heck of it, I just said it. Okay, so maybe some of you can tell me what shall I write next to V1 and V2? What is V1 and what is V2, in your opinion? Uh, Kevin? Perfect, and that is the perfect answer. Because before writing V1 and V2, we should always put the datum on, the, on our drawing. Thank you so much. And you said that I can put datum, I, we are free to choose the datum, yes, we can put it here, for example, you said, but I'm not going to listen to you. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to listen to the second part of your um, uh, answer, yes, I'm going to put datum here. Okay, this is my datum. Thank you so much. Okay, and now you guys can see that our particle is aligned with our datum at the beginning. You see that? So it will be zero. So potential energy will be zero. So that the only V1 come in here is V1 gravity, and it, it will be zero. And this one is also V2 gravity. Yeah. And what will be V2 gravity? 
Yeah. Maybe somebody who is like uh, not who was silent so far. Yeah. Is there anybody who now say something that was not like active? Yeah. Oh, Drew. Yeah. yeah MGH exactly. However, with negative. Yeah, because it's below our datum. Yeah, you can see it. Okay, and what is H? MGH, yeah. Drew, do you want to continue or not? Yeah. Perfect, yeah. H will be L sine theta based on this triangle, yeah? This triangle here, that red one. Awesome, okay. So thanks to Drew, we have 80% of the, of the problem done. Minus MGL sine theta. Awesome, 80% done. Now, are there any are there any non-conservative forces acting on our system? Are there any non-conservative forces acting on our system, guys? There is one, yeah? Let me draw it quickly. So we have our FBD, yeah? So this is FBD, FBD, but only for non-conservative forces, okay? Non-conserve forces. So the only non-conservative forces is tension, right? Yeah, MG I'm not gonna put in here because we took care of MG in here and here. Yeah, so uh, according to our uh, definition, we should write in here U12 of tension, yes, and that would be an integral from beginning to the end, T times dS, right? So we must do that scalar, scalar product. Yeah. So ds is per, uh, tangent to, to the trajectory. Yeah. So ds is here, and that angle is 90. So you guys can already tell me what that integral is. Yeah. It's gonna be zero. Exactly. This is zero. This is zero, and the work of non-conservative forces is zero in this case. So due to that fact that T is perpendicular to DS. Okay. So actually not one, not 80%, but 100% is done. Yeah. Okay. What's the next step? Plug these guys back into our original equation, into this. So what will we have in here? We'll have zero plus zero plus zero is equal to one half m v squared minus m g l sine theta. Great. So we m can be can cancel out. Yeah, and we end up with. Um, v squared equal to 2g l sine theta. Okay, so this is the second equation we obtained. Yep. So let's combine this equation with the one we ended up, we, 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 we left earlier. Yeah, so this equation with this one. Okay, our goal is to solve for theta. Solve for theta star. So let's, so let's put star in here. Okay. So I think that if we find 
this thing, v squared over L, we, we are good. And I bet that we can find it from this expression. Because v squared over L is equal to 2g sine theta. 2g sine theta star. Yeah. So let's plug this guy back into here. So that would be 2g minus g sine theta star is equal to 2g sine theta star. Wow, and g also cancels out even. And we end up with sine theta star equal to 2 divided by 3 radians. No, not radians. Uh, just 2 divided by 3. No, no unit. So theta star is arc sine of 2 thirds. Grab your calculators and obtain that this is approximately 41.810 uh, degrees. So this is answer. And this is the angle at which our rope would break. Questions? Easy? Yeah. Uh, Josh. Jake. Jake. John. Okay. <laughs> oh, it comes with experience. It comes with experience. I actually, yeah, I solved many of such problems. I just knew that I have to in, 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 introduce that variable so it would cancel out. Yeah. Solve homework problems and you will try and you will gain more experience and you will know that. Okay? Any other question? Uh, Ian? Where? Yeah. I don't know. I don't. Can you spe speak up a little bit? Potential. But what's the question? You mean like uh, pl planets or something? Maybe we, we will, maybe, yeah. I don't know. We will see in the future. Okay. Okay, guys, it's 11.50. Thank you so much for today and enjoy your weekend.